What's the crack, lads? Welcome back. We're talking meta again. You guys just can't get enough of the meta, meta, meta. What's the meta with you, lads? I don't know. But we're going to be back focusing on another Xabi Alonso video. We did one already where we did a review of Alonso, but now we're going to be taking a look at the meta and what's changed with the new update and also with the new style that people are playing. It's very similar to the old meta. You had that com com kind of completely, uh, you know, Klopp was really dominating that, completely dominated by Klopp with 8 out of 10 at the top 10 using Klopp. That is now shifted to Alonso. People are still using Pep. But they're not using it in the top 10 at the moment, it seems. So we're going to be showing you guys the new meta, how to beat the meta, um, and just how to kind of get the most out of, uh, you know, fighting fire with fire, or else being able to put out those flames by icing the game, really. So we're going to be showing you all of those things, and just going to be showing you some gameplay as well. If you've missed my Xabi Alonso review, check that out, but let's go. So in order to beat the meta, I don't care what your skill level is, even if you do this subconsciously, it's something that largely goes ignored I'm going to talk about it. It's about analyzing what type of opponent you have. So if you're coming up against a rusher, which is a one-touch pass, you know, very pressured player, high risk, high reward, wants the ball back. When he has the ball, it's all about getting it into attacking areas to get a shot off on goal. You know, knock-ons, touching goals, triangles. You can also come up against possession that played about the ball forward and played a possession with playing the ball uh, backwards. And then we also have crossers as well or wide players, which are a little bit more rare now with the meta. But this is one of the most important things that you might not even, if you're a high rank player, you might not even think you're doing this. It's just subconscious uh, in your mind. It's just like, okay, what's this guy actually doing? So you can see here with 50 seconds gone from tip off, this guy has already called in a teammate press. So I know in my head, even though I'm going to give it a maybe about 10 minutes in game, I know that this guy, chances are that this guy is going to be very aggressive, he's going to chase the ball, chase me, be very pressured, and he's going to depend on a lot of AI defense. Now, this isn't a skill thing. This isn't a guy that is going to be, you know, like saying that it's a bad player. This guy is a high skill player, high division player. But my kind of predictions with this guy are, if I hold the ball a little bit, I might frustrate him and I might have to play a bit of possession side to side, making the right option. You can see here again, he has no anticipation. He doesn't care where I am at Vieira. I've got, I can go left, I can go right. I can spend so much time on the ball with Vieira and then play the ball forward. But I'm not being, you know, I'm not being a rat holding the ball at the back or anything like that. I'm really being progressive with my possession and trying to get into dangerous areas. Again, the red arrow there, don't ever cross in there because of the gameplay or the way it is at the moment. But you can see how set up he is here. Even if I do a medium pass or a kind of easy pass, which is the green arrow, he's got three defenders that are being defended by the AI. And the AI are just demons, man. They're like Terminators at the moment. So that is going to be an issue. But we still get the break, a little bit of possession. We get the ball in here. But this pattern is going to continue on. 10 minutes in the game. I usually give it 10 minutes. This is why these players play this way, right? Watch him win the ball back here. Not once, but twice with teammate press. Now, I'm going to manually open the ball up and try to get it here again. His teammate press comes in and he's on me like a fly on... I mean, I don't know, leftover food. I don't want to say anything else. But this is genuinely where the gameplay is at, you know, at the moment, a lot of the time. I know that they've tweaked some things, but still this does ring true for when you're playing a really high-skilled, really aggressive presser. You know, it's been the meta for so long, and this is why people play like this even when they go a goal down, because they know all they need is one chance. They will get a chance or two, and it's shoot on sight. So you can see here again, I'm being a hypocrite, you might say here, because I'm using teammate press. Of course you will use teammate press, but there's a difference between using teammate press in a little area that you know you can win the ball back than literally spamming it and using it every time you're out of possession. So again, we will see here that I'm just barely offside. That could have been another chance, but we've kind of like summed up in our heads now after the first half. We can kind of play this second half a little bit differently. Again, this is going to be the next key step in beating meta and it's doing the unexpected. So we have got Trent out here who's going to be down as a right midfielder, but we're actually playing a sub tactic, which this guy probably hasn't copped onto since the second half. So when we are going to be playing in the second half, and just before the first half, we're going to mix it so that if he makes any alterations and he man marks or he just tries to close people down or anything like that, we're going to have a different setup. So we've gone from this setup to this, where Messi is now going to be using him as a winger, an out wide player, you can trigger runs with Messi or with players 
any player that you want once you go into their zone. I will cover this in a future video, but essentially what you're doing is you're waiting for the AI to make the run that you want, and if the, if the run doesn't wo work, you recycle it back, um, which you'll see here in this clip that I'm about to show you. So you will see Messi here, Trent, who was playing as a right midfielder, but on the sub tactic that we have now, you know, popped in, we are going to be having Trent push back to a right back position, and we're going to have Messi as an AMF gone from a CF, who's probably been picked up by the C CB for him. We're going to cause confusion here when he goes out wide. He's not tracked up here. He's still going to be teammate and pressing. He comes with right card, leaves a massive gap in the middle. Who's in there? Carlos. And yes, it is a bad goal to concede. That's just a goalkeeper sometimes. You know, I don't deserve that second goal, to be honest with you. But we looked at a video before of the top 10 ranked in the world. Now, I'm going to take another look at this later on in the week, and we'll do another video of this and just see a couple of differences. But Alonso has, has effectively replaced uh, Klopp, or Zeitzler, as he's known in-game. If you are using Klopp, and you have been using Klopp for weeks, Alonso is now the choice that a lot of people are making. And I'll tell you why, right? Because when you analyze somebody and you realize how they're playing, how they're actually setting up their team, a lot of people will do a single DMF or else they'll have one DMF that will drive the ball forward, either by running or passing. And then you're set up very effectively at the back. Doesn't matter if you're long ball counter or quick counter. This is essentially the pattern of play. Uh, and apologies for the crude graphics, lads. I've been super busy with work this week, so apologies, the graphics are pretty poor. Um, but it, I hope it showcases what we're doing. We're, we're not going to overcomplicate it. What you are going to want to do, no matter what your formation, no matter what your tactics, no matter what your setup in your squad is, is once you overturn your opponent, it doesn't matter how heavy they are pressing you or anything like that, you are essentially going to want to move the ball from your CB or your ball winner, left back, right back, or one of your centre backs, or one of your three centre backs if you're using a three at the back, you're going to want to shift it to your midfielder. It doesn't matter who it is, but you are going to have the option then to be able to touch and go forward with somebody like Vieira or anybody. It doesn't really make a difference or your orchestrator or else pass it forward like Jared that you can still run in with the AI. So depending on how you have your team set up, you will essentially go on through the motions here and go on through the conveyor belt of overturning your opponent when they're on an attack with Nesta, Maldini, Araujo, Tommy Yasu. It doesn't matter who it is giving it to your midfield uh, kind of fulcrum to kind of link CB with your CFs. You're not going out wide a lot of the time. A lot of people is going to be, you know, are going to be playing like this. I don't play like this. I obviously, you'll see here, I like to go out wide, you know, Trent, Messi. Most of my chance creation comes from involving one of my players out wide, overlaps, recycling. It doesn't work as effectively as it did in previous patches, but it's still kind of a bit back since V3.5. But Rummy and Mike alone here, are my, going to be my main guys that when I get a chance with them, I'm going to shoot on site all the time. I also want to cover this just about somebody that asked me, a few people were asking me about the rank one um, and his formation. And it's kind of like, kind of like a spider formation where you've got your four center backs, which is obviously the meta. You can link in that. It doesn't matter who you're using. Saliba, the licked, it doesn't matter. Once you have a passive CB, that's not a destroyer. So you're not going to be playing three CBs that are destroyer, like, you know, Aldair. Um, Saliba is obviously a buildup. The licked is a buildup. You obviously can upgrade Casemiro, depending on what version of Casemiro that you have. I know rank one was using the big time Casemiro, but you can pop in Vieira, Rijkaard there. It doesn't make a difference. You can switch it up with Gerrard, Baggio. There's a couple of different players in here, but the rules remain the same. What a lot of people do when they have the ball up front is they're literally just shooting on sight. And that's where the fear comes in. When you go a goal down against somebody that's like top 20 in the world, they already have you psychologically kind of worried a little bit. Unless you really trust your game and unless the connection is flawless, you already have it in your head that you're going to have to go a little bit deep. And that's why a lot of people kind of like go back into themselves, including me. I've beaten, you know, top two rank in the world. I've beaten top six in the world before. But I've also lost the guys in Division 3. Sometimes when they get a run on you and you just can't close down the gaps for whatever reason. It's just a video game, so anything can happen. But a lot of the time is, if you have got an issue with your team set up, these guys that are top rank will exploit it. And it's all about sub-tactic and it's all about changing the style of the run that the AI is making. Now, when I say that, it's something that you kind of have to feel yourself when you're playing. You can kind of know. It's all about analysis. If you want to improve your game, I don't care if you're Division 5 and you're only playing on a Saturday for an hour or two, or you're looking to push top 50 in the world, you have to be able to analyze in real time what your opponent is trying to do and stopping him from doing that. 
If that means sitting on the ball for an extra touch or an extra dribble, or it means going into a flat 4-2-2-2 with Jar kind of popping up and your artificial wick coming from your attacking midfielders with uh, Mbappe and Leao, two strong, fast, physical, mobile, good in the air, good on the ground, fast, as I said, very, very good, effective goal scorers. It doesn't matter who you use up here, Romy, Eto, uh, any of those. Again, artificial space and artificial space and with the AI when you don't have the ball with Messi and Baggio, a lot of people using this four triple two and then of course you've got your two assassins up front a lot of the time what it comes down to is that back four that you see there we have got four players in our back four there that are essentially four cbs without being four cbs you've got casta court as a left back but he's essentially a center back but gomi the homie can play right back and he's down as a right back but essentially he's a cb and again, counter-target on Baggio, counter-target on Messi, whichever one that you prefer to attack with, you can switch that with the sub-tactics. You can go attack him with Jared if you're chasing the game. This is where sub-tactics come into it. But just said I touch on that because rank one is using such a kind of a, a different formation setup. But yeah, I mean, listen, that is my biggest tip for beating the meta, lads. It's recycling the ball in effective areas, not losing and getting turned over in possession and being comfortable to be able to analyze what your opponent is doing and don't play literally do not play at his own game you know don't play at his own game re re really play at your game and if you are struggling you can always change things but let me know if this video helped you we'll be back soon what other video would you like to see and i will talk to you in a bit don't forget to subscribe